in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make this ron weasley inspired cardigan it's going to be a bit of a chatty video where i catch you up on what's been going on as well as set up some goals and plans for my next few videos and at the end i'll tell you how to make the cardigan in a bit more detail so if you would like to skip ahead to that i'll put a timestamp here and without further ado let's get into it so first off, let me start by apologizing for missing last week's upload. I was having surgery. So as you can tell in this video, the background is not my usual background setting. That is because as you can see by the band on my arm, I just got home from surgery. I want to say this is day three of being home. The first two days, like I didn't move. I have four holes in my abdomen. I was not moving at all, but by this day, I was able to kind of start moving around and also they gave me medication take home. So that helped kind of with the moving around process. And I also was supposed to move around a little bit. So I moved around all the way over to the couch and I'm just sitting there. My boyfriend is home. So I'm just chilling with him in the living room and my, with my cat watching TV. We're currently watching Ice Road Truckers and I am just working on this cardigan. I was lucky that I got this request to make this cardigan a few days before I went into surgery. I was looking for a project to kind of keep me occupied once I got out of surgery because I knew I would need something fairly easy. And a few days before I got, uh, someone contacted me on Etsy and asked me if I would be able to make this. And I was like, yes, it will take a few weeks. I am having surgery. And they said, that is not a problem. Just let me know and it's all good. So that is just, what I'm doing here, I'm just working on making all of the squares, attaching them, so on and so forth. So my plans moving forward is I have several video ideas planned out. Some of them are going to be crochet, some of them are going to be on the Centro, and then some of them are going to be a combination of both. So if you don't have a Centro machine, you could also just replace that with crochet, which in some of them, I'm going to show you how, how to do both. But my plans are, I have a few different projects I want to make. Some of them are, uh, I kind of want to keep them a secret, so I'm not going to give them away. But some of them are going to be useful, some of them are going to be cute. And then there are also several projects I just need to finish. So I don't know if I want to do a video where I, I have like a finishing projects video, where I finish all of them in one video. Or if some of them I might break up into a couple different videos. And then there is one project that I need to fix. It is a completely done project. It has been done for months now and I've been wearing it and I love it. It's a hexagon cardigan. The only problem is now that I've had it and been wearing it for so long, it is like stretched out and I wanted it to be big in, to begin with. And so I made it oversized, except for now it is significantly oversized so i'm going to make a video on how to take apart old projects so that you can either use that yarn for a new project so it doesn't go to waste or how to take apart projects to revamp or fix them to so you can keep enjoying them because i love this cardigan i love this cardigan so much it's just too big so i've not been able to wear it the last like month or so because it's just so overbearing and then also i'm wanting to do a new another video where I do like an office makeover, like a craft room makeover, because it is, there's not really any rhyme or reason to my room. Like everything's just kind of in here so I can craft, but there's no style. There's no like great organization. So I'm wanting to make some stuff. Like I want to make like a crochet scrap crochet uh, trash can. I think that would be super cute and kind of go with my aesthetic and maybe like some storage bins. I also, my table I'm using is like one of those like fold up ones that you just get at like Walmart. And so it has this, these bars underneath. And I was thinking I could make like a, a net, like crochet or use my Centro to make like a net underneath it, or at least for the back half to hold like some yarns or some projects I'm in the middle of working on that I just want to like tuck out of the way as well as maybe I have this uh, cabinet thing behind me that I was thinking I could make something similar, like a, a mesh, I don't know how to explain this without showing you, but like a mesh fabric that drapes off the sides of it that has pockets. So I can like store stuff on the side of that as well. And then I'm also 
wanting to, I have a lamp that I'm going to move in here and I kind of want to crochet some stuff onto it to, I don't know, like either make it look like a giant plant or just use like some scrappy yarn and do some really cute stuff to it to just make it fit like my personality and my style and just maybe make a rug. I don't know. Do something to my chair maybe. I'm not sure. And definitely make something for the walls because there's no art. The only thing I have pinned up on my wall right now is a pattern for a dress that my cat would not leave alone. So I had to hang it up where he couldn't reach it. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make that a video which I think would be really cute. I'm thinking I could do it in a way where I do a video for each of those projects and then do one final video of me showing you how I'm using them and what the space looks like before and after. I think that would be a really fun like little series as well. And also if you have any like suggestions or recommendations or anything, feel free to ask. You can reach out to me on Instagram. Or you can also contact me on here in the comment section below. And as for the projects I'm going to be working on that are not office related or like projects I'm fixing related, they're going to be useful project. Bleh. They're going to be useful projects that are either like accessories that are useful, uh, stuff to use around your house that are useful, but also stuff that like you can wear that are cute and just several different things. And then I also have one that is for my cat, which is gonna be really cute and functional as well. Also, one of the projects I'm wanting to work on, which I know I'm wanting to keep most of the projects I wanna work on a secret in this video, but this one I'm just really excited about. I wanna make a wreath. I currently have a wreath on my front door, but it is from Christmas. And I had one planned out for like summer that was gonna be like functional between summer and spring. It was gonna be really cute and have like strawberries and strawberry blossoms and vines and stuff all over it, but I just could not be bothered. I was busy, I just I had other projects I wanted to do. I just never got that one done because I'm just not a big summer person. It is warm where I live and I am a sweaty person and I hate it. <laughs> so fall, I love fall, fall is my season. I'm born in fall, so I am pumped to make a fall wreath and I have an idea. I don't want to give the idea away of how it's going to look. I just know I want to make a wreath so bad so so bad so I'm gonna do that and I think that might mostly be it I might also do a video where I like organize my yarn which to some of you might sound boring but I know I personally kind of like watching videos where people like pull out all of their yarn they kind of go through and kind of a little bit of a like a you know the classic show and tell of their different yarns and ideas for projects with them or stuff like that like it really helps inspire me and then also wind them all up on my little ball winder because some of them are just askew <laughs> they're just everywhere and it's not good so organize them pull them out wind them up figure out how i'm going to organize them and then also have like a like section where it's just like tiny balls of yarn i can't do much with for scrappy projects and then actual true scrappy ones that are so small that I just start tying together as I get them and start a ball of just a scrap yarn. I think that'd be, I saw someone do that in a video and I was like, that would be so fun. Like I wanna make a little ball. I can't remember who that was, that was months ago. But I, it's not a new concept. I've seen so many people do that in videos and I've done it before. Before I saw people do it, I just, I forgot and didn't think about it and I wanna do that again really bad. Right. And here, I don't know how long we've been moved over to my usual background because I was staring at my window as I was talking because there was a cat walking around. Um, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, we're back on my usual background. And the way I'm doing it is the cardigan is individual squares, but I'm doing like the up and down panels like I'm doing in one solid panel instead of individual squares I connect so the only ones that are actually having to be sewn together are like horizontally together not vertically if that makes any sense it'll make more sense later at the end when I show you how I'm doing that so I'm going I'm going through and I'm doing all of that and then I'm going to connect them and then do the trim which I don't think I actually got the trim recorded because I think I did that on the couch when I was really, really nauseous yesterday. Like yesterday, nothing got done. I was, I did not feel good. I had a headache. I was nauseous. It was just not a good day for me. And then I did record me doing the 
ribbing cuffs of the sleeves and then that's kind of where it cut off and that's like the last clip is me doing it but I don't fold it back out so you can see it but you can see it in the image at the end where I go over all of the steps and how I made it more specifically this is just kind of a quick time lapse because I was not feeling good so I just was like hey I have this project I need to do I can easily turn this into a video and I honestly kind of like these like chit chatty crochet with me type videos it's something nice to throw on have someone talking feel like I have a friend sitting here with me also again I'm going to give away another project I'm wanting to make a video for is making a bowl cozy because while I've been back from the hospital the only thing I could really consume was soups and though all of my bowl bowls I have are microwave safe and one of them even has little handles that says cozy on it it's like the perfect little soup bowl it's sage green just like my blanket was at the beginning of this video. Uh, the handles still get hot and the bowls that are microwave safe still get very hot. So it, I was having to use like oven mitts to carry my soup into wherever it was I was having my soup for the day. So I'm going to make bowl cozies. And there are tons and tons of tutorials all over YouTube of bowl cozies. I'm sure I could look it up and be like, wow, that's a lot. But I'm going to add to that list of videos and make my own little bowl cozies. I don't know if I'll do a funnel design or keep it simple or what, but we will, we will see. So yeah, my little experience showed me that I really need some bowl cozy. <laughs> okay. Now I have the back panel of the cardigan made. I'm gonna flip that this way, and I'll lay the wrong side or the inside up. And on the front panels, I'm going to lay the matching sides down. And then on the shoulders, I'm going to attach this square to this square, and then this square to this square, but only for like halfway. And I'm going to leave this open. I'm going to do that on both sides to where the second one's only half done. That way you get this little like collared effect. However, that being said, when you do attach it, you'll want to then rotate it so the right sides are together and then connect it that way. And I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Now that I have both the front panels attached to the back panel, I have the inside part facing up. And here's the front panel, here's the back panel, here's the sleeve. And I'm also going to get the inside part facing up. And I'm going to just attach it all the way along. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And I'll be right back. Right. Yes, this is where I skipped me going around the entire thing with one row of single crochet all the way around the edge. So that's all I did was with the same size hook that I made the cardigan in, I went around the entire edge with one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. And now on the cuffs, I did the same thing. I did the one single crochet all the way around the cuff, which ended up being 30 stitches which will be explained more in the end and then I just did the cuff which is eight single crochets nine chained one for the turning chain and I just did single crochet and did ribbing for that which will be explained more in the end as well 
and then I just close it up. Alright, so for the cardigan, each square is 20 crochets across and 12 rows up. And I did each horizontal panel in one go. So they're kind of like one long rectangle instead of individual squares. And then each time I got done with one, I would slip stitch the horizontal panels together. And again, the squares are 20 crochets across and 12 rows of double crochet with a 6.5 millimeter hook. And then I did the two in the front, the two rows in the front and then the four in the back and then the two on each sleeve which ends up being four, two for the front, two for the back. And then once I got done slip stitching everything together, I went around the edge with a single crochet in every stitch all the way around the entire cardigan with the 6.5 millimeter hook. And then on the sleeves, I started at the cuffs, not the brown part of the cuffs, not the ribbing, but the regular uh, part of the cuff. I did, instead of the 20 across, I did 15 across. And I, each one is still 12 rows. There's two panels, so it'll end up being 24 rows. But I started off with 15 and then I ended, which is where the end is where it connects to the sweater. I ended with 30, so I just slowly increased until I got to 30. And I just did that according to my arm size. And then on the cuffs, I first went around and did a single crochet in every stitch with a five millimeter hook. And it, so it ended up being 30 all the way around, 15 for each side. And then I did ribbing, which is eight single crochets. So it ended up being nine chain stitches and one for the turnaround. So it's eight single crochets for the ribbing on the wrists. And that I believe is everything I did to make this sweater. And again, I showed you a flat version of the front and the back of the sweater. So if you would like, you can recreate this yourself as well. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment section below. If you would like to ask them in a more private setting, you can also contact me on Instagram. And if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!